Well, would you listen to that? That was the sounds of Tafosi hearts breaking here in the heartland of Ferrari. It was not to be today for Charles Leclerc or Carlos Sainz. It was all Max Verstappen and Red Bull's way. If we rewrote the script yesterday today, we ripped it up. Max Verstappen with a perfect weekend to take P1 in the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Sergio Perez with P2 for Red Bull's first one two since Malaysia 2016. A very happy Christian Horner watching that podium. Welcome to the F1 Live post race show here in Imola. Welcome as well to Jean Alesi, Ferrari legend uh, and F1 ambassador, of course. Well, Jean, not to be for Ferrari today. What do you put the results of both drivers down to? Well, uh, it was a tricky uh, condition. And uh, I have to say, uh, today uh, Ferrari was not as quick as uh, the Red Bulls. It's uh, a shame for Carlos because um, um, not a misunderstanding, but you know, this uh, very slippery uh, first corner uh, can be a trap. And uh, uh, with um, R Ricciardo, they, uh, they touch and uh, he went in a gravel back bag and then that was over for, for him. So uh, a shame, but uh, we, we had a, a great show, a lot of fight on track, uh, not really easy for the drivers. The beauty of sport, there are highs and lows. It was lows for Ferrari, but my goodness me, did we have highs for Red Bull. Let's take a look at the results. This will be very pleasant viewing indeed for the team led by Christian Horner, Max Verstappen, the winner here in Imola of the Emilia Riemannia Grand Prix. Sergio Perez, P2, and then Lando Norris capsulizing on that Charles Leclerc mistake in P3, his sixth podium of his career. P4 for George Russell. What a battle that was against Valtteri Bottas in P5. It was sixth for Charles Leclerc, the best he could do after that spin and crash into the wall. Yuki Tsunoda, P7, a great drive from him. And Sebastian Vettel in P8 for Aston Martin's first points of the season. Kevin Magnussen, more points for Haas in P9. And Stroll, double points for Aston Martin in P10. We'll take a look now at the bottom half of the field, Alexander Albon, just outside, but a great race alongside Gasly and Hamilton in P12 and P13. Ocon, of course, dropping to P14, thanks to that five-second penalty. Guang Zhou, P15, P16 for Latifi. A race to forget for Mick Schumacher. Daniel Ricciardo, of course, tangled up with Carlos Sainz at the start. P18 and a retirement for Fernando Alonso. A retirement for Carlos Sainz as well, two cars out. Let's start at the very start then, shall we? A good place to start, and that is with the crash. Straight off the bat, we knew it was going to potentially be chaos. The rain had come down for hours before it. It had eased off. It had stopped, but it was still very wet. This track doesn't dry so easily as others. And we saw Ricardo and Sainz hot into that narrow turn one, and the rest is history, certainly for Carlos Sainz. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the cars are so powerful. Um, maybe Sebastian can, uh, can, can say something about that. When the car is uh, on the on the grid like that, you have so much wheel spin. You you want to go on the power, but uh, very uh, um, easy to uh, to lose the, the the first jump you had from uh, the light off to uh, uh, the the first speed, and uh, you want to go on the throttle, and then you lose the traction, and and then uh, you you lose positions. Well, while well, we've been talking about the crash at the start between Science and Ricardo, Sebastian Vettel has joined us. First points. <laughs> Hello. First points yeah. for Aston Martin. Uh, talk us through your race and indeed the impact of it as well, looking at the season as a whole. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we, we did really well today. I don't think there was more on the cards for us. We benefit from the uh, conditions, yes, or on Friday with the, with the wet. Also today, the, the first opening, the, the first laps, opening laps. And um, after that, it was survival. You know, we, we know that we don't have very strong pace, but, um, you know, it was all about managing, managing the tires to, to the end uh, without suffering too much front graining like some people did. So, yeah, it's eighth place. I'm not lying, but for us, it's like a victory. And to have both points, uh, both cars in the points, it's even sweeter. So we are very happy with... Uh, with the five points we got today. I know it's only eighth, as you say, only tenth for Lance, but considering where the car has been, where it is now, there's progression, still, isn't there? It's still there. Are you so feeling that's the improvements? Why I think, uh, yeah, it's still there. So, you know, it's, you saw yesterday, we didn't have the pace in raw, dry condition and we get eaten up. So um, today we were able to keep faster cars behind for longer. I think due to the conditions again, making the right call at the right time to go to dry tires. Um, you know, I think uh, that was all, all good without taking unnecessary or stupid risk. So, um, 
it was a shame because I love these conditions and then Valtteri came out the lap after and I was a bit stuck. I felt that those couple of laps I had a bit more more pace, but um, yeah, I was, uh, was really pleased. I have to say, when you did uh, gamble pretty early to go on to the slicks, I think we all thought back to Russia <laughs> when you gambled very early there, but it paid off this time. I don't know if it was Russia, I think it was Turkey last Turkey, year. that was it, Turkey. Yeah. Bit early that time, but yeah. bang on time this time. Exactly. And then for the DRS, you, you didn't want to have the DRS yeah. earlier? <laughs> no, because I don't overtake anybody, you know, we were, <laughs> we, were, we were out of position, meaning in a good way, so... But I, I heard that there was a bit of a discussion whether it should have been activated earlier. I don't think so. I think, okay. uh, you know, let's be honest, you know this track as well. And everything starts to shake when you go down to uh, Toza, is it? No, yeah, no Tam uh, Tamborello? Yeah, Toza, Toza, number one. To ah, Toza. And um, it narrows, you have the trees, you don't really see if it's in completely dry or damp. And also the, the asphalt here is rough. So it might be dry on top, but still wet underneath. And it might look still damp. So it's very easy to have something like last year that um, is unnecessary. So. Yeah, I think it was correct. For Aston Martin, what does this mean for Miami? For yourself as well, just betting into this car, of course, well, after the first two races. Well, it's good. We get off. some points in the in the bank and uh, in the you know in the in the bag, so uh, it's good. And um, you know, it's the first race for me was really bad. Uh, this one was really good. So uh, let's see. Uh, hopefully, we keep keep uh, keep a trend. And you know, we are not really able to fight for points when it comes. You know, for, when it's just depending on raw pace, but. Who knows what's happening? It's a street circuit, so you don't see a tire at all. Did you push? I didn't see. Sorry. <laughs> did you? Did you, you? don't look tired. You push. Tired. Did, yeah. did you push? I think his cars are a little bit heavy. You know, <laughs> I think uh, the power is great. The downforce is good, but they're a little bit heavy. So um, also in these conditions, you know, it's very tiring for the mind. A bit less so for the body. But uh, I did push. Like, trust me. Also down the straights with our car, you need to be awake. Otherwise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can have an off. Great. Thank you very much indeed. Thank well you. done today. Hopefully you can celebrate like it's a win. Thank a you. great result for Aston Martin. Thank you very much Just to Sebastian, Sebastian Vettel. It was great to see double points for absolutely, them, wasn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, they had the struggling uh, um, beginning of the championship and uh, that was uh, um, good for the team to have points. And a great drive for Yuki Tsunoda. Yuki. Hello, congratulations today. A brilliant drive for you. P7 for you, and you came up, yeah, from P12. Great battling on a track that's notoriously difficult to overtake on. Talk us through your race. I mean, I'm really super, super happy to be uh, able to score points, especially home track. A uh, lot of tension from the factory people uh, having, and also a lot of uh, supporting from the grandson and Avatari flags. So I'm super happy. Um, I was, you know, I expect, expect it's hard to overtake here. Um, but at the same time, the car, was, car performance was really good, uh, especially compared to Australia. Um, and yeah, I think it was good. The updates we brought was definitely working well. Um, and I think I couldn't perform like this if I have not, if I didn't have these updates. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'm super happy and uh, thanks for the team. And you key to have uh, Lewis Hamilton behind you for the whole, whole race. It was okay for you. <laughs> Well, I had the same similar situation last last year quite a lot in uh, Turkey, for example. Um, I don't know if he likes me or not, but uh, <laughs> um, but you know at the same time I I learned lot, lots of things from him. Even he's driving behind, I can see from the mirror how he approached uh, into the uh, corner. You know he took how he took different line compared to me to over, try to overtake next corner. Lots of things I can learn from him, and uh, definitely every time. Um, I made a step uh, because of him, so yeah, I mean, I had a lot of respect and uh, yeah, it was always super fun to, also pleasure to, happy to drive with him. And Pierre Gasly managed to hold him off as well, your teammate. Uh, there is pace in this Alfa Tauri, it's about getting a bit of rubber the green, a bit of luck, isn't it, I think, for Alfa Tauri at the moment? Yeah, I think um, it's not the, I mean, we made a step definitely, but it's not the still the pace we want have uh, to fight in top midfield consistently uh, obviously we have to see more more tracks uh, how the car behaves but um, this is most important thing is we have made a good step not the backwards or stay you know stay so uh, we do just we do like step by step and uh, we still have 19 races to go so um, hopefully we can uh, achieve a good car and are able to fight in the top midfield and uh, hopefully we can achieve the fifth in championship Progression, for sure, with Miami, yeah. a new Grand Prix on the yeah, cards. How are you yeah. looking forward to it? I'm super exciting. Um, I'll be, it will be se second time I'll go to America. So um, I'm super excited. Uh, also, team will 
also team is also very excited as well. And Miami is uh, you know one of the famous uh, places to go, and uh, I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we can't wait. Thank I you very wait. much indeed. Well done today. No, no party, eh? No party in <laughs> Miami. Oh, come yeah. on. Thank you. Thank on you, Yuki. See you. Oh, great stuff from Yuki. Uh, really, uh, I think, kind of aggressive drive as well from him. Brilliant to see. We mentioned Lewis Hamilton there. You brought up that he was behind him for the entire race. It was not to be for him today. Yes, he had that contact with Ocon in the pit lane, of course, and that will have just impacted that pit stop. But... George Russell P4, Lewis Hamilton P13 does not make for pretty viewing at all. Yeah, the conditions was, uh, you know, as uh, Sebastian Vettel explained, extremely uh, tricky to make a, a try because uh, uh, there is a dry line and uh, on the side uh, is very slippery. Uh, you know, Lewis uh, is Lewis. Uh, the, uh, the iconic drivers who doesn't want to look stupid making uh, uh, something uh, uh, not... Um, not uh, intelligent to uh, to go from 14 to 13. So um, he's waiting for a better car, and I'm sure Mercedes is waiting also for a new spec and to have um, a Lewis Hamilton back on the top. For the first time since Mexico 2017, Max Verstappen lapped Lewis Hamilton. And at one point, a graphic came up on the screen that everybody in the office I was in audibly gasped at. And that was the gap between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton was 77 seconds. It makes astonishing viewing as he just walks through shot that was not planned. It makes astonishing viewing when you consider the situation we were in in Saudi Arabia, in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, you know, uh, that's uh, the law of uh, Formula One. Uh, you can be, uh, as Ron Dennis was saying very often, uh, hero or zero. And uh, today um, the car is uh, it's not there. And uh, uh, last year we have seen um, one of the most incredible championship in between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. And today Lewis is um, racing with uh, a car. He's doing his uh, job the best as he can because, you know, he's... Uh, He's a hard worker, he's a fighter, he, he deserves all the championship he's he, he got, so it's a tough time for him. We have to support him. Yeah, absolutely. We've just seen him walk through the back of shot there from the media pen. He's been talking to the world's media, and here is his words now. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, been stuck behind them a bit this weekend. What did the car feel like overall today? Was it just as much like it's been difficult to drive all year? Uh, the, probably the worst that it's felt. I mean, but it's similar to other races. When you see Max unlapping you, I know it's a diff it doesn't matter who's lapping you, it's never a good feeling, but does that kind of show you how far you guys have changed over time? Um, yeah, this shows how wrong we got it. Well, there we go. I mean, he was running P14, of course, promoted to P13 because of Ocon's penalty. But it was a grim weekend for Lewis Hamilton and, and more widely Mercedes. But P4 for George Russell was very much the icing on top of um, a not very well cooked cake uh, for Mercedes. And at one point, of course, with George Russell's drive, we must remember that he had chronic understeer because they'd forgotten to do something with an aero flap in the pit stop and he had understeer throughout the race and actually given that he drove exceptionally well he defended so strongly from Valtteri Bottas as well you know um, in, in this part of uh, the career for a driver especially in uh, in George position he drove a good car last year who was uh, worse than the car he's driving now even if the Mercedes is not competitive is anyway better car than what he used to uh, to deal with in the past and I'm sure you know this kind of situation uh, make for the driver uh, a kind of um, a different skill to to deal with uh, a problem you know you have to uh, to race with it and uh, and then at the end he he, he, he did a, a good job for the for the um, for, for the whole weekend well, we'll hear from George Russell now. He's been speaking to Lawrence Barreto in the pen. Hey, George, uh, congratulations on, on more points. You had a very busy race, some good pressure from Bottas at the end, and you held him up. Yeah, it was difficult because um, the first stint was, was strong, but I had loads of understeer in the car. So I wanted to put a lot of front wing in, in the car for the, for the dry tyre. 
and then ordinarily you need to put a lot more front wing in the car for the wet compared to the dry and unfortunately we, we didn't manage it at the pit stop so I was like bugger this is going to be a, a difficult 40 laps and I just had to manage that tyre because um, I wanted to attack Lando but I knew that that front right would have just disappeared and I'd have definitely finished behind Valtteri so you know really pleased with uh, with the result today P4 was massively out of reach after qualifying after the sprint yesterday so yeah good good result again I appreciate it's not a car that you'd be wanting to drive at the moment but it must be encouraging that you'll just keep getting these results yeah it really is it was still difficult to drive with, with the bouncing there was one time I was on the radio and it sort of took my breath away down the street uh, with, with the bumps and um, need a nice hot bath tonight to recover which I don't think will be the case um, but yeah you know it's as I said before it's a result, result <coughs> results based business and um, we're getting the results at the moment relatively speaking so it gives me confidence that when we improve the pace of the car we'll be there great stuff hope Thank you get that bath cheers yeah <laughs> All four races in the points so far for George Russell. At one point this season, he was second in the championship as well. He is proving to be incredibly consistent so far and at the moment outperforming somewhat his teammate Lewis Hamilton. What do you think his side of the garage are getting right that Lewis's side of the garage potentially aren't at the moment? A um, long time ago, uh, I was, uh, you know, um, a young driver and I had Alain Prost as a teammate and that was in Ferrari. The car was not competitive. Alain was doing all the, the best and the, the bad job for, for me. And um, I, I was, in, in a way, you know, fresh and I was not uh, feeling the pressure. So I was sometimes able to make a better job than, me, than him, even if he was a, a three-time world champion uh, at the time, and then he, he became four. But um, I think for George, it's the same thing. So, you know, he's fresh. He, he, he wants to prove he was a good choice for Mercedes and uh, uh, he's uh, thinking to stay for a long time in the, in the team. And Lewis, you know, he has all the pressure, not the pressure, all the, the to carry this uh, um, uh, heavy weight because uh, the car uh, has to go in a different di direction and uh, he needs to give as much as possible the information to develop the car. Both Lewis and Toto saying they will continue to work hard to salvage something from this season. We'll move on to McLaren. Uh, better fortunes in a way, but not for Daniel Ricciardo. So much of that early pace, that early promise not coming to fruition after he tangled with Carlos Sainz, deemed a racing incident. Uh, but, but his race very much over before it really began. You know, for, for the drivers, there is always a moment where it's like in football, uh, you... you you want to, to score, you want to, uh, to put the ball inside and then it doesn't go in. Um, Messi, Ronaldo, all these players, you know, for, for um, Carlos, it, 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 it's a weird situation because he tried to make the best uh, out of the, what he's driving, but uh, he takes not a lot of risk. Today, really, you know, he was outside, there is a, a space inside, but... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Daniel make uh, a small a small locking and uh, he had no chance to avoid the, the contact and um, everything went uh, wrong but I'm, I believe he will he will very soon uh, be back. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's hear from the man himself. This is Daniel Ricardo talking through that crash. All right. Well, Daniel, you just watched the replay of turn 1. Do you want to just talk me through it? Yeah, I I haven't seen I'm trying to look for my on board. Um but I think, yeah, all right. Um, yeah, obviously, um, not not the way not the way I wanted Sunday to go. Of course, um, yeah, painful one, and uh, obviously, not the way I want to uh, affect someone else's race. So I, I just saw his on board. I haven't seen mine yet. But originally, I, I thought I got hit, but I think that was after the fact. Like I, I touched cut, like slid up into Carlos. And then once he was around, then I got pushed further, but I, the damage the damage was done. Um, but uh, from memory, I think I got onto the curb just to try by myself, obviously a bit more space, because I know at some point it's going to bottle up. Uh, but I think, yeah, once I got on the curb, I just slid off it and then started to slide up into, into him. So uh, I think that's, that's what happened now after the fact. And uh, obviously intentions were in a way good to try and uh, let's say leave, leave some room but uh, yeah in those conditions it was uh, 
obviously I didn't didn't have the grip that I was hopeful for and uh, slid up into him and obviously ruined uh, ruined his race as well. And then we had damage and it was a painful, painful uh, 60 laps. Frustrating, I guess, given the grid slot and the improved pace you guys have shown all weekend. Yeah, it's for sure, for sure frustrating. Um, yeah, I mean, competitive or not, it's never, um, it's never a way you want your Sunday to go. You know, lap one incidents are, are the worst, especially when you keep going, to be honest. Um, it's easier when you finish it on lap one, you know, it's like, obviously then the rest of the race, you're trying to make something happen, but with, with damage as well, it just, it's never really going to come around. So, um, yeah, we'll try and, uh, try and pick some things up, but, uh, for now, obviously I'll go, I'll go and, uh, see Carlos. I'm sure he was in here already, but go see him. And, uh, all I can do now is apologize and just try and, uh, try and move on for Miami. All right. Hard luck. Man. Cheers. A downbeat Daniel Ricciardo there and of course heartbreak for Carlos Sainz. Not his fault, that error, but a mistake in qualifying. A brilliant sprint race to come back into the mix, but a mistake in Australia as well. Is he becoming the number two driver at Ferrari now? It's a long championship. It will be a mistake uh, for a professional team like Ferrari to already decide uh, which um, uh, driver he has to be support. And, uh, you know, we have seen today, um, everything can happen. The points are extremely heavy and uh, there is so many points to, to get. Uh, the politic of Ferrari is to have uh, uh, the very well-balanced uh, uh, combination in terms of uh, uh, treatment in the team. And uh, last year, you know, um, Carlos made a great championship because he had even more points than, uh, than Charles. I don't think so. They will, uh, and they need to decide uh, now to go from one to do more to uh, Charles or Carlos. They uh, they need to uh, to have a, a real Carlos back, and that uh, is going to be uh, the the most important job for Ferrari. Miami will be incredibly important for Carlos Sainz. Let's hear from him now. He's with Lawrence Barreto. Carlos, after that difficult start, it didn't get much better. And just talk me through what happened with Daniel. Yeah, it was a, a difficult start, as you saw, but there were still 63 laps left. So even if you lose a position to a McLaren, like Lando or whatever, you know, it's still a long race to go, uh, especially in these conditions. But unfortunately, I think I left plenty of space for Daniel in the inside, but he decided to get on the curb and and, uh, and understeering to me. And that was it for my race. So very unlucky, very... Yeah, um, nothing I could do differently there, but uh, it's what it is. What was going through your mind when you were in the gravel again, second race in a row? It's tough. It's uh, I'm not happy, and, and, and I'm not. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough to to go through it, especially in a home race like this with all the Tifosi getting the support from them, wanting to put a good race for them. Yes, as I said, the start wasn't great, but uh, we will analyze why. But uh, it was still a long race ahead, and for some reason. I was the unlucky guy that, uh, for someone's mistake, I had to pay. So um, it's, it's how it is. Hard luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Tofosi Hart's break for Carlos Sainz and indeed Charles Leclerc as well. Not on the podium, not in the race-winning position that I believe the Tofosi would have expected of them, certainly here on home soil and with the pace we've seen from Ferrari so far. A downbeat Carlos Sainz will have to make it count in Miami. Uh, let's talk about Lando Norris, who capitalised on that Charles Leclerc spin and he found himself up onto the podium. Although, to be fair to Lando Norris, he'd done everything right in this race. He kept his nose out of trouble. He stayed stay safe. He stayed calm. They pitted him at the right time. The strategy was right. And he had a good battle with Charles during the pit stops as well. Yeah, but Lando, you know, is the freshness of the Formula One. Um, uh, when uh, they uh, told him uh, he finished P3, you you hear the you know uh, the the noise I mean what uh, the expression of him, and uh, he makes uh, all the fans happy. You know, um, he's one of the the most uh, um, loved driver in the paddock, and when uh, we see McLaren, who is an iconic uh, team, who had also like Ferrari a, a bad moment, it's, they are back in uh, some occasion. He makes every everyone happy. Well, a P3 and a P18 for McLaren. Bittersweet, I think it's fair to say. Andrea Seidel is with Ariana Bravo. Congratulations. When we spoke yesterday, you were optimistic about the race today, and I imagine that you were absolutely delighted with that result for Doris. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, to go away from uh, this weekend here uh, with the podium, 
something we couldn't expect. Uh, so I'm very happy. It was a yeah, well executed race by the team, together with Lando, who had it under control at any moment um, of this race today. So I'm, I'm super happy. Um, great confirmation for everyone in the team as well that we have put together a, a great car over winter under these new regulations that we could also overcome this challenging start after the bad test we had in Bahrain as a team that we kept uh, pulling through as a team in a united way as well which was very important after this initial disappointment and so I'm very happy uh, with this of course at the same time a small disappointment with uh, Daniel's race after the incident in the first lap because he could have been up there as well uh, he had a good pace as well all the weekend but uh, Overall, we leave this track now, I think, with 22 points, um, which is great for us. Fantastic points all for you over the weekend. And I wanted to pick up on that point about the improvements of the car, because, of course, when we came out of Australia, there was a little bit of caution that it may be track specific. No one wanted to get too excited. But after this weekend, you must be feeling confident that actually you've made the improvements. And do you feel strong now with your pace and looking forward to the future races that you're really well and truly back in the fight? Never feeling too confident because uh, <laughs> this machinery in here in this paddock is never standing still. But it's obviously good to see uh, also at this weekend here under really all conditions. Um, didn't really matter uh, with which tyres also and an ambient uh, temperatures that we had a competitive car, um, which is great. At the same time, there's no point getting overexcited. Uh, the gap to, uh, to, to Red Bull and Ferrari when they get everything together is still huge. But a uh, result like today is obviously great motivation to just keep working hard, um, trying to bring more performance to the car as quickly as possible and uh, have more weekends like this one. And just a word on Daniel, of course, that contact at the start did you know, ruin his race, but what was it that was then holding him back for the rest of it? Was he just out of it too much and just unable to extract any more from the car? Yeah, I mean, he had uh, damaged his car yeah. quite heavily. Uh, mm -hmm. At the rear, I think from the contact with one of the Alfa Romeos uh, during this incident, and so there was really uh, nothing he, c he could do. And uh, anyway, once you're at the back of the field and once you're in these uh, DRS trains, we have seen with Luis, for example, not a lot you can do. We still try to um, to do a different strategy to see if there's any opportunities coming up, but nothing come, came along. So yeah. Obviously disappointing uh, for us, for him, uh, but at the same time, I think also for him, it's encouraging to see that we have the pace in the car, that he has the pace as well, that he feels comfortable in the car and the uh, results will come. Absolutely. When it's a smooth weekend, you know that the car's got it in it now. So congratulations once again. Fantastic result for Lando. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've just been lucky enough to have Red Bull walk through, haven't we? Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. Uh, you say congratulations to Max Verstappen. What did he say back to you? Oh, because yesterday I gave him uh, the medal and they <laughs> said today no medals. <laughs> <laughs> no medals, but the win, the all important win and a perfect weekend, a huge chunk of points for Max Verstappen. We've just heard from Andreas Seidel there, obviously, on the McLaren improvement. And if you look at their results in Bahrain and where the car was to now, it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? They've come on so much, but can seriously have more ambition as well to keep pushing. Yeah, but McLaren, uh, it's McLaren. They have a real story behind and um, with the new regulation, you know, he gave the chance uh, for, for the, uh, the teams to um, have a good project and to work around it. I, I don't believe uh, the project was wrong when we have seen the lack of performance in Bahrain, but just they have um, some issue to, uh, uh, to fix. And it looks like they, uh, they touch uh, the, the, the right button to do it. So we are pleased to see that. And... Um, Lando uh, make a good job uh, with, with it. They are pushing all the right buttons, and if it weren't for that damage, we could have seen Daniel Ricciardo up there in the points as well. Let's hear now from P3 today, Lando Norris. Hello, Lando. Hello. So what is it about Imola then? <laughs> Got no idea. <laughs> Everyone just crashes in front of me. It's <laughs> wonderful. So, um, <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, we won a lot in the start. I had a perfect start, honestly. Probably my best one I've had in the wet. Um, you know, that put me ahead of a bit of the carnage, you know, Carlos got taken out then, so um, we won a lot in the beginning and uh, we just had really good pace throughout, I guess not as amazing as the guys ahead, but I just managed it like I needed to do ahead of George and um, that's all I needed to do. So uh, it was good, of course, like fourth still would have been amazing, but um, to be P3, you know, make the most of uh, Charles's mistake was um, just the icing on the cake on the 
pretty amazing weekend that we've had so far. So, um, yeah, super happy. Great to have good performance as well versus those midfield rivals. Yeah. Must be yeah, pretty. I think there's definitely you know work to be done, of course. Um, it is nice to see that we take maybe that little step forward. You know, we brought a couple little things to the car this weekend and it seems to have helped. Um, it's only one track, so we will have to wait and see on, on some others. But, um, you know, the trend that over the last three races has, has now been a much better one. And, uh, of course, we'll try and keep that up and, and continue to try and bring small improvements and, and continue to try and score what we did today. Like, it's not going to be easy. It needs to be a perfect day and perfect weekend to do this over and over again. But, um, but we're getting there and we're getting closer and, uh, you know, the hard work and time that's getting put into everything to, to bring these parts is, um, is huge for us and it's, uh, it's helping us score things like today. So um, big thanks to the team. Great stuff. Congratulations. Cheers. His sixth podium, his second consecutive one here in Imola as well. That was Lando Norris. And he endured quite the battle with Charles Leclerc. I say endured, he probably enjoyed it as well. A really good battle with Leclerc, obviously until the moment in which Leclerc's race changed completely. Yeah, I mean, um, at the beginning of the race, it, it was the condition was tough. But at the end, when um, uh, Charles made the, the, the mistake, um, we have seen... Uh, a lot of, uh, not uh, problems, but a very tricky place to overtake. And uh, Variante Alta, where he had uh, the spin, uh, you, you need to go really out of the corner um, as fast as possible because you need to keep the position very close for Rivazza 1 and Rivazza 2. And uh, he overpushed and he lost the car. Uh, the car was flying a little bit. and. Uh, and it uh, was over. He actually was lucky to uh, damage a little bit the car. A few shouts of Lando. I look behind and, and there he is. Let's talk about Charles Leclerc. He too has walked through looking desperately unhappy and we're not surprised. He was up there pushing for places, a brilliant battle with Perez. He could have been there, thereabouts. But then that spin, that mistake that we saw from him, is that pressure because of the position he finds himself in this season? Or is it simply just trying to push a little bit too hard? We had a weekend, you know, with this uh, sprint race. Yesterday, after the start, it looks like uh, um, the, the race was uh, in the pocket for Ferrari. And suddenly he had um, this um, uh, uh, drop of the tyres, uh, some um, graining, and he, he lost the position. He finished second. He really wanted to be back in, uh, in the battle uh, today. But he understood, I believe, uh, very, very soon during the race, he had not the, the pace to, uh, to win. But um, he wanted to be in between the two cars, and he overpushed. You know, he uh, probably explained, and um, you know, the mistake in the Variante Alta was um, part of uh, uh, a mistake. Well, let's hear from him. Let's hear now from Charles Leclerc and exactly what happened out there. He's with Lawrence Barreto. Charles, I don't really know what to say. Can you just talk me through your emotions? I'm disappointed, disappointed in myself. I tried uh, too much, obviously. There was an opportunity with Checo on that lap. I thought, uh, well, I obviously wanted to give it all and, uh, and, and gave it all in turn 14, 15, but I gave too much and uh, finished into the wall. So uh, instead of the third place, we lose uh, seven potential points, seven potential points that uh, will be important uh, at the end of the season. And uh, yeah, but today it's uh, my full responsibility. So um, yeah, I'm disappointed. I will. Uh, Look what I've done uh, wrong on that particular lap. The car jumped in a strange way, but this is no excuse. This is uh, just because I tried to put too much speed and, uh, and lost the car. So, yeah, disappointed. This was a weekend where Red Bull looked strong across the whole weekend. It's going to be an intense fight, isn't it, over the next couple of races? Yes, they are very strong. Uh, and they were stronger than us uh, throughout the weekend. So uh, we, need to, we need to understand that. We need to react. and. Uh, and yeah, today third place was the best we could do, but um, we should have been third, and I and I haven't been. So yeah. Oh, a desperate result for Charles Leclerc. P6. Uh, short term, this will be incredibly painful. Long term, is this more of a blip for Ferrari? Can they learn from this weekend? Obviously, looking ahead as they bid two title challenges. Well, you learn all the time, but uh, for sure uh, now they uh, all the um, uh, the focus is for uh, Miami. And they, uh, they want to, to carry on. They will have uh, probably a small step um, to improve the car because uh, here they have been a little bit uh, slower than uh, Red Bulls. 
Ferrari have made no bones about their ambitions this year. They want to win both driver and constructors. They're in they're in great a great situation at the moment. They've got this fast car, but it's going to be about the drivers and indeed Mattia Bonotto really pulling together here and bouncing back from this well. It's a long time Ferrari are not uh, winning a championship and uh, uh, for sure, you know, fighting with a team who is freshly the, the winner of uh, the, the championship uh, with Max Verstappen is going to be tough, but uh, they... Uh, they have all the facilities to make it. They really do, and they have the fast car for it. Uh, let's hear it for, from Mattia Bonotto uh, after a very difficult weekend. Mattia, of course, not the weekend that you would have wanted here, home race. Uh, pretty devastating, but how do you look back on the, on the weekend as a whole? Because the potential was there. No, I think you're right. We would have hoped for a better result here in front of our Tifosi. It's always special to come to Imola. And we, we hoped that we could have been somehow performing better. But today, I think as, as some of details made the difference, we had poor, poor starts, Carlos crash, not the best pit stops, a small, let me say, mistake of, of, of Charles when he was trying to catch up on, on Perez. But having said that, I think we need to keep the smile on. It's still a long way to go. I think the car is competitive and uh, there will be races moving forward that maybe will be more positive for us. Absolutely. And on that instant with uh, Carlos Sainz early on in the race, what is your opinion on that, the contact there that he had? Uh, obviously, I think he has been simply uh, pushed from, from behind. I don't think that there is any anything wrong in what uh, in what Carlos was doing. But uh, I guess that's part of the racing. There is nothing you can really blame. But certainly, I cannot blame Carlos. I think for, for Carlos it's a shame because for him at the moment it's right, quite important to try to, to do the finish races, to do mileage, laps after laps, try to learn the car and now he's to race in the road that he has not the opportunity to do it. Hopefully you know, you'll be able to pick yourself up now, dust it all off uh, and move forward to Miami. As you said, the potential is there for the car. You've absolutely got the performance. We've seen that in the previous races. So do you think it's just a case of ironing out the kinks that we had this weekend and then coming back better well, for the next I think race? We'll certainly review all the data and see what we could have done differently or better for the weekend, but then prepare ourselves to Miami. I'm pretty sure Miami will be again a different track, a new challenge, quite a high-speed uh, circuit, so we'll have different type of of down first level, so a completely different situation. And uh, there are races where maybe as in Australia, we've got a better performance. The, the 15 days after here in Imola, maybe Red Bull was a bit faster. And I don't know how it will be in Miami. I think we will only discover it when we will be there. But uh, it will be a long championship. Developments will be important. We are fully aware of that. But I think uh, at least uh, there are races where as today are not so positive, but we need to keep the smile on. Absolutely, the ups and downs of a Formula One championship. Thank you so much for talking to Welcome. us, Matthew. It's a long season. That is very much what everyone is saying, aren't they? Certainly if you're in the Ferrari camp as well. And indeed, if you're in the Red Bull camp, while we had heartbreak for Ferrari today, we have seen Red Bull heartbreak in previous races as well. Not today. My goodness me, what a brilliant race it was for Max Verstappen. What a brilliant weekend. Pole position, sprint win, fastest lap and the race win. It was perfect for him. It was perfect. We didn't see him a lot in TV because uh, the, everything happened behind, but, uh, you know, the results are there. And um, yesterday also, you know, the sprint race, uh, immediately um, the start was uh, uh, not the, the best he, he wanted, but uh, he, he waited the good moment when the, the, the car had really no uh, drop down and uh, fantastic weekend. The start wasn't there yesterday. It was there today. He got the better of Charles Leclerc after the start for sure. Yeah. Today, you know, uh, it was not only the, um, the first uh, uh, jump of the car because these cars, I mean, even in a sixth gear, you have a slip, you know, and uh, I mean, a wheel spin and uh, uh, the control and uh, all the, the good positioning, uh, the position of the car on track make a big difference. Um, it was the best. He overtook Leclerc on track as well. Yeah, he made a, a, good, uh, a good pass. I mean, uh, Charles had um, <coughs> not uh, really, um, um, yesterday he was uh, really uh, careful. Uh, today uh, he didn't see uh, Max at all, you know. Uh, Max disappeared. Uh, he, he, he had uh, the, um, also after the first corner, uh, Perez and Norris in between. So that make, with a spray of the water, some um, uh, trouble for, for Charles to be able uh, to, to keep the, the gap closed, but 
uh, the, the winner today is a real winner. I think Max Verstappen will be very pleased as well for a quiet race out front where he's not really got much tension on him. Mean, Perez was very much embroiled in the battle though with Charles Leclerc. We can hear from him now. Out there today, you look really, really strong. Yeah, it was a good result. I think the rule number one of these conditions is to finish. And it was so easy to make a mistake throughout the race, you know, going into the slick tyre, the warm-up phase and, and so on. That, that was going to be difficult, but it was great to, to get that victory. Overall, the pace of the car all weekend has looked strong. It must be encouraging from a team result point of view as well, going forward in the championship fight. Certainly, I think it's a great result for the team. And I'm very pleased that we got the victory and the, and the second place. I think uh, given the, the, the start of the season we've had, it's a great result for everyone back home. Great stuff. Thank you, Jacob. A 1-2 for Red Bull as well. As I said earlier, their first since Malaysia 2016. That was incredibly important, wasn't it? After three races and just three finishes from their two cars. And Checo yesterday was um, uh, the best uh, driver for me uh, during the race, the sprint race. He, uh, he was unlucky because uh, the safety car came out and uh, killed uh, a big part of the, of the first uh, uh, race. I mean the the first part of the race, sorry, and uh, then he had uh, no chance to to uh, to catch um, uh, Charles. But honestly, I mean he had a brilliant weekend, brilliant weekend. He did, he really did. We spoke to a pensive Christian Horner who was uh, eagerly awaiting this Emilia Romagna Grand Prix before the race. We can now speak to, I'm sure, a much happier Christian Horner now. He's with Sam Collins. Christian, in a racetrack with Ferrari written above the door, it was the Red Bulls, not the red cars, that took a dominant result. How did that come about? Well, it's not often a bull beats a prancing horse, but, uh, you know, it certainly did today, which was a fantastic result. And, the, you know, the result of a huge, you know, amount of teamwork, not only trackside, but behind the scenes, in the factory, you know, after the disappointment of Melbourne to... You know, to come back and, and you know add some performance to the car and, and, and you know strategy, pit stops, everything, you know, reliability, everything was perfect this weekend. So, in fact, I think only one point off a complete maximum score across the sprint race and the and the Grand Prix. And we saw Ferrari struggle through well driver errors, quite frankly. And actually, Ferrari's performance seems to have dropped back a little bit relative to yours. You have made a real step forwards, and even Mattia Bonotto earlier on has admitted that. So going into Miami, do you think you can keep that going forward on a very different sort of racetrack? Well, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, two weeks ago in, in Melbourne, you know, Ferrari had the edge. Um, and I think it's all about being in the right window with these tyres. Uh, we can see today we were a little bit better on the tyre than on the front tyre than uh, Ferrari was, and it was the opposite in Melbourne. So, uh, you know, Miami, let's see you know, who, who it favours. But it's been very, very close between the two teams, you know, the first four races. And But, you know, great for us to get that result in, in really tricky conditions. Coming into this weekend, there were some downcast comments from some of your drivers, and both of your drivers, about the World Championship. But really great result. Is it now game on again? Well, it's a long, long season. I mean, the 23-race season, the longest in, in history, plus sprint races. As we see, there's big points from a weekend like this. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, we're in in striking distance in the constructors obviously we reduced the gap in the in the drivers it's still a more than a race weekend's worth of points but uh uh you know that's that's really encouraging considering you know the two dnfs that max has had and the one that checo had christian congratulations thank you very much thank you very much thank you I think we should play It's a Long Season Bingo and see how many times drivers and team principals can say it. And of course, it's absolutely true. It's a very long season, 19 races left to go. But Christian Horner saying a perfect weekend for Red Bull and that here they managed to get the tyres in just the right window, which they hadn't quite managed to do in Australia. It's true. And even if uh, Friday morning uh, we have seen the Ferrari immediately very fast and the big gap in between the Ferrari and um, the uh, Red Bull, they react uh, really on a top way because uh, they, they found out where to go for making the, work, the tie working better. And uh, the results was, uh, as uh, Christian said, the best uh, as possible. And drivers still very much getting used to these 18-inch tyres. They're still also very much getting used to the rain because we haven't had a race in rainy conditions in these new cars yet. It's true, but we, we have to say it was a wet race, but not a heavy rain. And uh, the cars, uh, I, I believe, with this floor will make a lot of spray. And um, this morning when we arrived, 
uh, it was uh, really uh, um, uh, raining a lot and I was scared to have a delayed race and uh, you know bad uh, condition for the beginning of the race but it was not the case so we have to say with this um, uh, intermediate tires it was okay but with the heavy rain maybe um, yeah, we, we're going to have some problems. It was perfectly time for us to be out on the grid pre-race, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we yeah. stay dry. Your lovely green jacket Thank stayed you so nice much. and dry. Thank you. Well, let's hear it from the winner of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, Max Verstappen. Max, what a weekend! Uh, F1 sprint win, great result in qualifying, and obviously the win today. You must be delighted. Yeah, I mean, um, coming into the weekend, of course, I didn't expect something like this. But as a team, I think we executed everything very well. And that's always very hard to do throughout such an intense weekend with the sprint qualifying as well. Um, but yeah, very pleased. I mean, of course, to score the maximum amount of points, also how the whole race went from the start to the right calls uh, with the tyres and then also 1-2 at the end. So yeah, super happy. A lot of points scored. We also needed the points. So uh, we, we look like we're a bit more back on track. But uh, yeah, we have to try and keep this going. It must be satisfying on many levels, like you suggested, better reliability after the problems you've had, but also the pure performance of the car versus Ferrari here was very strong. It looked good, yeah. I think uh, we did uh, we did have a good feeling with the car, but you know, every race track is different, and uh, you um, you know also the weather now made it a lot more complicated. So uh, when we go to Miami, completely new circuit, so a lot of question marks, but we can enjoy this Sunday for now. Great, sir. congratulations. We look like we are back on track. Ominous words from Max Verstappen. The ebbs and flows, the highs and lows of the Formula One season. That's what it's all about, isn't it? That's why we love this wonderful sport as well. Let's take a look then at what the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix has done to those all important driver standings in race four of this brilliant season. And of course, because of his gap, Charles Leclerc is still pretty city, oh, sitting pretty on top. Charles Leclerc then 86 points. Max Verstappen, Red Bull Racing 59 points. Sergio Perez in P3, George Russell, P4, still there. So consistent, isn't he, for Mercedes? Carlos Sainz drops down to P5, of course. It is close, though. Lando Norris, P6, Lewis Hamilton, P7. Valtteri Bottas just behind his former teammate in P8. Esteban Ocon, a difficult day for him with that five-second penalty. P9, Kevin Magnussen, P10. P11 for Daniel Ricciardo, P12 for Yuki Tsunoda, just in front of his AlphaTauri teammate Pierre Gasly. Sebastian Vettel, P14 points today, all important for Aston Martin. Fernando Alonso, a day to forget as well after damage to his car, saw an early retirement, P15. Grand Yujo, P16. Alexander Albon, P17. Points for him last time out, no points here, just outside. Lance Stroll, points once again for Aston Martin, a good day for them. Mick Schumacher and Nico Hulkenberg, that's a funny name to have on the, the list, isn't it? Remember when he came in? Uh, Mick Schumacher and Nico Hulkenberg just rounding out. That's 20 list drivers. Oh, there we go. Charles Leclerc still at the top of the standings, but it is closing up behind him, isn't it? His grip has loosened ever so slightly, but as we all say, it's a very long season. Long season and the two DNF of Max uh, are also very heavy for the championship on the uh, Red Bull side. And I must say, Mick Schumacher, I said earlier, a race to forget. I think he had two spins. He was involved in the Carlos Daniel um, collision at the start as well. He had another spin and then he actually got black and white flags as well for track limits. A, a difficult day for him. <clears throat> difficult day, but, you know, he has a good car, so you have to, uh, like uh, Carlos, uh, to be back uh, on, um, on with his mind and uh, to think about the result for the rest of the championship. He caused the retirement for Alonso as well. The list goes on, but hopefully he'll take the positives from that P10 in the sprint race. Well, that's just about it. Thank you so much to Lawrence Barreto in the pen, to Ariana Bravo and Sam Collins out there roaming around talking to our team principals, to Will Buxton and Jolian Palmer, who have taken us through the race in the commentary box back at Biggin Hill, to the team here on the ground and indeed the team behind the scenes in Biggin Hill as well. And most importantly to you, Jean Alessi, for being a wonderful co-host. Thank you so much and sorry for the froggy... Uh... <laughs> Jackets. I enjoy your jacket. It's got a lovely Thank sheen you. to it. It's good in the rain, I'm sure. Uh, well, there we go. The Emilia Romagna Grand Prix is coming to a close. Max Verstappen is the winner. It's all advantage Red Bull, isn't it? Sergio Perez in P2 and Lando Norris for McLaren in P3. What a thrilling race we've had here. Next time, we'll go to a brand new racetrack. It's time for the Miami Grand Prix. We'll see you there.